morning, everyone. I'm sorry for the slightly late start, trying to um, make sure that we get the live stream going. It sometimes creates problems. Just a reminder that last week we launched the um, Soldier's Memorial book. Uh, if you'd like a copy, they're at the back of the church. They're $25 each. Quinn's holding the book, box, box. Up. There's an envelope for your money. But it's excellent. And if you weren't here last week, um, Lyndall Blackley has gone to a huge amount of effort researching the histories of all the soldiers um, and um, some of the women, so, so nurses as well, who, who served but, and are memorialised in this church. What that means is when we read over the names on Anzac Day, we're not reading out a whole list of initials and we actually have real people who we're remembering. So $25. It's great to have some of you today. This is very loud. Last week for the... Um, gunfire breakfast. It's nice to have a bit of fellowship. And if anyone's interested, we are also now meeting again for breakfast on the first Saturday of um, the month after the columbarium service. So if you'd like to be part of that, just let me know. We go down to Cafe 63. Some people just have coffee. Some people have big breakfast. Um, some join us later. It's, it's just an opportunity for fellowship. And I've got a note here about um, grant applications. If anybody feels that that's their particular skill, we constantly miss out because we don't have anyone on parish council with time or energy to follow up grants and um, there are, for example, heritage grants that we're eligible for every two years if only there was someone that could do the background work into that. And also, if you didn't see it, um, we do have a funeral planning booklet. Um, and I know some people are superstitious about planning their funeral, uh, but let me tell you, as the person on my side of the equation, it really does make a difference for your families and often for your clergy if we know what your favourite hymns and um, favourite Bible readings, or the, not favourite Bible readings, but ones that you would like. And now I have an announcement that will surprise some of you and not surprise others. I have to tell you, and I tell you with somewhat of a heavy heart, that the Archbishop has accepted my letter of resignation. I don't want to cry, but I will. It's been a di difficult decision, but as some of you will know, I've worked really hard for the 25 years of my ministry. It's perhaps been more difficult because of being at the forefront of the women who've been ordained but I've tried to do my best by the diocese and the parish. And in particular, the last two years with the deaths of my parents and managing COVID, I'm conscious of really taken a toll. You need to know that I have been extremely happy here and I've been extremely grateful for the privilege of serving with you. My last Sunday is not till the 14th of November. I just um, wanted to let everyone know so that the process of replacing me could actually begin. Um, and because I have long service, my actual finishing date won't be till the 28th. But my last Sunday will be the 14th of November. Daryl, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, there are going to be a lot more opportunities to wish Marion well, but I think we should just start with a round of applause for everything she's done. Um, 
it's been a wonderful period for the church and uh, we've been very grateful to have Marion here and, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll all have the opportunity to express that. Um, so uh, I've drawn the short straw this morning. Thank you uh, for sanitising your hands on arrival, uh, registering on paper or using the QR code and uh, it is good to see you're all sitting in an assigned seat. If you're not sitting in an assigned seat then you should. Um, remembering that we won't make physical contact during the passing of the peace and that the offertory plates will not be passed around but can be found at the front and back of the church. Uh, congregation will only receive the bread at communion and we ask you remain in your seat until signalled to move, standing on the, line, uh, on the line on the floor and stretch your hands out. At the conclusion of your service, please leave your books in the plastic tub provided and an exit by the main door, trying to keep your distance from others. And we wish to thank you for your continued support and thank God that these are minor inconveniences that are keeping everyone safe. Thank you. And today is the fifth Sunday of <coughs> Easter. We're going to begin with the hymn 533, I Come With Joy. The liturgy is on page 119 of the prayer book. The Lord be with you. Christ is risen, alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
let us pray. God of love, to whom we are united as branches on a vine, may we so rely on you for life and strength that we might bear fruit worthy of you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Acts, beginning at chapter 8, verse 26. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? and he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before his shearer. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, And both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is a portion of Psalm 22, and you'll find it in the middle of your few bulletins.
The second reading is taken from the first book of John, chapter 4, commencing at verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Saviour of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Hear the word of the Lord. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St John, chapter 15, beginning at the first verse. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that, do, that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it, it abides in the vine, Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you, cannot, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. Ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
In the name of our Saviour, Jesus, source of our life, our nourishment and our well-being. Amen. I am the fertile soil. I am the warm sun. I am the source of comfort. If I were anyone else were to make such claims, you would think that we were mad. Yet Jesus makes several such assertions. I am the bread of life. I am the living water. I am the true vine. I am the good shepherd. I am the light of the world. I am the resurrection and the life. And I am the way, the truth, and the life. At least seven times Jesus claims, I am. At face value, these statements hold a great deal of meaning. Jesus is telling his disciples that if they place their trust in him, he will protect them from harm. He will be their light in the darkest of times. He will be their source of goodness and strength, and he will satisfy their deepest needs. I'm not telling you anything new when I remind you that the Gospel of John is rich with symbolism. And so we should not be surprised to discover that there is much more to this imagery than first meets the eye. There are, in fact, three different usages of I am in John's Gospel. It can occur without a predicate, simply as I am, as in unless you believe that I am, or when it does happen, you will believe that I am. Occasionally the phrase is used simply in the sense of I am he. For instance, when Jesus comes to the disciples across the water, he says, I am, do not be afraid. And lastly, I am is used with a predicate as it is in today's gospel. I am the true vine. I am is the language used by God of God's self-designation. When God appears to Moses in the burning bush and commissions him to bring the Israelites out of Egypt, Moses says, Whom shall I say send me, sent me? God replies, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. When Jesus uses this terminology then, he is identifying himself as God. It appears from the context of the Gospel that not only is John making clear that Jesus and God are one and the same, but he is also helping the community for whom he writes find an identity that does not depend on the synagogue or the temple. A number of references suggest that the gospel was written at a time after the destruction of the temple when the Jews who believed in Jesus had been expelled from the synagogue. One of the goals of this gospel is to answer the question what does it mean to belong to a community that believes in Jesus? And how could that community's worship be ordered now that they could not attend the synagogue or participate in the Jewish festivals? It is impossible to go into detail here, but one of the ways that the author of John addresses the problem is by indicating that a believer's relationship with Jesus is sufficient because in one way or another, Jesus has replaced important Jewish symbols, festivals, and perhaps the temple itself. Just for one example, when Jesus says, I am the living water, and I am the light of the world, he is using symbols that relate to the festival of booths, during which water is brought into the temple and huge candles are lit. Now that the community have Jesus, they have no need for such festivals. On top of that, several of the images in Jesus' I am statements, bread, light, water, shepherding and vine, are commonly used in the Old Testament 
to describe the relationship between God and Israel. Jesus' adoption of these images for himself indicates that the relationship between God and Israel has been extended to those who believe in Jesus. The relationship between God and the people of God is no longer dependent on external signs but is focused in the person of Jesus. What's important to note here and what I think we often overlook is that God's relationship with Israel is with Israel as a whole and not with individual members of the people of Israel. And when we take that into account, the imagery takes on a whole new meaning. And this is particularly the case with today's Gospel. Jesus' claim to be the true vine is a reminder of our collective nature and it challenges our modern concepts of individuality. If Jesus is the vine and we are part of the vine, then as people of faith we do not exist as individuals but as a community. One of the reasons for divisions in the church whether at a parish level or at an international level, is that we don't understand that we do not belong to the vine as individuals, but as a group. It would be a nonsense, you'd have to agree, to suggest that every branch or every twig on a vine somehow existed separately. The life of the vine flows through to the whole plant in equal measure. My life in the vine is not different or separate from your life in the vine. Individual branches do not draw their sustenance from different sources, but from one and the same vine, that is Jesus. Being attached to the vine challenges our individualism in another way. It is only by being connected to the vine, Jesus says, that we bear fruit. Only if we, the branches, are receiving the life-giving sap from the vine are we able to be productive. Or put the other way round, if we bear fruit, if our life and actions show forth the presence of God in the world, it is only because we are integrally connected to each other and to Jesus, the true vine, who is the source of all our life. Just as our life in the vine is one and the same, so it is with the fruit that we produce. In this image, fruit does not mean the fruit that you produce or the fruit that I produce. It refers to the fruit that we produce together as members of the body of Christ, as branches connected to the vine and as followers of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the true vine, not the true vineyard. There is one vine, and we are all connected to that one vine. So let us pray that our connection to the true vine will nourish and sustain us, so that through our lives as part of the community of faith, we may collectively bear fruit that reflects the source from which it comes. On page 123 of your green prayer books, let us together stand and affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, 
of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. The response to the bidding, God of love, in your mercy, is hear our prayer. God of love, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving and merciful God, you sent your Son into the world that all might have life through him. We pray for the whole family of nations. We pray for all who endure poverty, starvation, oppression or war. We pray for peace between nations and for a just sharing of the earth's resources, that we may live as sisters and brothers, children of the same God. God of love, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You sent your Son to be the Saviour of the world. We pray for your worldwide church. We pray for all who bring alive the scriptures the missionaries, teachers, theologians, writers and preachers. We pray for unity among Christians, that together we may proclaim the gospel and live as sisters and brothers, children of the same God. God of love, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. You sent your Son into the world that we might know your love for all people. We pray for this community. We pray for our families and friends, those we meet in our daily lives, for the hungry and the homeless and those without work. We pray for a community that values and cares for all its members, that we may live as sisters and brothers, children of the same God. God of love and your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You have sent your Son into the world to heal the sick, console the sorrowing, and satisfy the hungry with good things. We pray for all in need. We pray for all who are lonely and sad, for those in grief or despair, and for the sick. And especially at this time, we pray for the nations struggling under the weight of the COVID-19 pandemic, especially India and Brazil. We pray for compassion and generosity to respond to the needs of others, that we may live as sisters and brothers, children of the same God. God of love, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. You sent your Son to the world that we might have eternal life. We remember your faithful people who rest in your eternal love. We give thanks for Philip and all who have opened your scriptures to others, for all who have carried your good news to distant places, and all who have shared your gospel with those close at hand. In life and in death, may we follow your saints, that with our sisters and brothers of every generation, we too may abide 
forever in your love. God of love, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. God of love and mercy, accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. Let us pray. We do not presume to come come to your your table, table, merciful Lord, Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been offered for us. Therefore, we come to celebrate the festival. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith with a sincere and a true heart. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you stand? I won't help in future. Or not help. We are the body of Christ. The Spirit is with us. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Sorry for those at home. Christ is alive.
form of the Thanksgiving prayer is on page 128. I'll be using the Easter preface on page 154. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. And now we give you thanks that you raised him to life triumphant and exalted him in glory. By his victory over death, the reign of sin is ended, a new day has dawned, a broken world is restored, and we are made whole once more. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread.
gifts of God for the people of God, holy things for holy people. Let us pray. <clears throat> Eternal God, giver of life, in the breaking of the bread we know there is a Lord. May we who celebrate this holy feast walk in his risen light, 
and bring new life to all creation. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your Spirit. Almighty God, who redeemed us through the resurrection of Christ and has brought us out of slavery into everlasting freedom, give you joy and peace in faith and bring you to your eternal inheritance. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. The hymn 531. Peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.